We welcome all visitors and members of our area faith community to this celebration of the Eucharist. Let us give thanks to God who brings us together to bless our efforts in sharing the life of Christ and being the love of Christ. So please stand as we begin. in the lives of those we serve. We reach out to those who are homeless, to those who live without warmth. In the coolness of evening, we'll shelter their dreams. Clothe them in mercy and peace. In these days of Lenten journey, we have seen and we have heard the call to sow justice in the lives of those we serve. We As we nourish all people who hunger for food, may their faith in our God be renewed. In these days of Lenten journey, we have seen and we have heard the call so justice in the lives of those we serve. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we gather in prayer this day, ever mindful that God is here, we join with Peter, James, and John. We join with our Lord on the mountaintop, there to see our Lord transfigured before our eyes. We see the transfiguration so that we too might be transfigured by the grace of this sacrament, so that we might become more and more like Christ. And so let us be ever mindful of our need for the Lord's mercy and forgiveness. Let us acknowledge our sins. Let us seek God's help in our time of need. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever.
A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, Take your son Isaac, your only one, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in the place of his son. Again, the Lord's messenger called out to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I shall bless you abundantly and make your descendants as, count as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the gates of their enemies and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find a blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. and sing and call the name of God. In the land of the living, I will walk with God all my days. The dying those who keep faith is precious to our God. I am your servant, called from your hands. You have set me
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? Christ Jesus it is who died, or rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the shining cloud, the Father's voice is heard. This is my beloved Son, listen to him. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain, apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them, along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice, This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. Here, here I am. Here I am with you. Here is all of me. Here you go. Here. So what is all this commotion about here, anyway? Well, if you listened carefully, it is the word of the second Sunday of Lent. 
It is the mantra of Abraham. It is the proclamation of Peter. Both make it clear that it's important to be here. Abraham says, not once, but twice, as he's called out first by God, then he's called out by the angel of God, Abraham, Abraham, to which Abraham responds, here I am. Here I am. Sound familiar? You and I heard it not too many weeks ago. That time it was from a gentleman called Samuel. But today, the mantra of Abraham is those three beautiful words. Here I am. And then Peter, good old Peter, Peter finds himself in a moment of, why, in a moment of sheer amazement. The clothes are dazzling white. And the vision is incredible. And they're at the mountaintop because then that makes the view even more magnificent. And Peter makes that great proclamation, it is good that we are here. So today, on the second Sunday of Lent, we need to think about, well, we need to think about here. Now, in the language that I was raised in, I'm guessing it's the same language you were raised in. The word here can have two different meanings. Here can mean the place where you and I are, here. And then it can also mean, why, an offering. Here you go. This is for you, here. So here can mean presence, but it can also mean offertory. And here, my friends, is where presence and offering meet. Ah, could that be the meaning of transfiguration? Is that what transfiguration means? The meeting point of presence and offering? I think so. It's the reason why Abraham was able to proclaim, here I am. It's the reason why Samuel was able to proclaim, here I am. It's the reason why Peter was able to proclaim, it is good that we are here. It is a place, it is a presence, but it is also an offering. Here, here you go, here I am, here we are together. Why, we use that word frequently, but oftentimes we don't live in the here. Why, just today as a matter of fact, I met my neighbor that I hadn't seen since last fall. We met at the mailbox. The weather was nice, in case you didn't notice today. And as we walked outside to get our mail, as the sun was shining, and as we talked about how incredible the weather is, what did we immediately do? Why, the two of us started talking about the snow that's on its way. I bet you did the same thing, didn't you? Why, isn't it amazing that we can't just be here? Because there's always that pull, that pull in both opposite directions from here, and that pull is for you and I to go back to the past or to jump to the future. It's the reason why our weather forecasters love seven-day forecasts in the hopes that you and I don't remember what they said seven days ago. <laughs> why do we need a seven-day forecast? Why not just be here? Why not just wake up in the morning and stick our head out the door and see what the weather is going to be. Ah, but we are people that want to know. We want to know about tomorrow and the next day and the next day. We are people who are constantly worried about what it is that we did yesterday and the day before that and the day before that. And so in the midst of all of that 
past and future business, we forget about here. This moment, this time, this opportunity, this encounter that you and I have, where we are able to not only be present, but that we are able to offer ourselves. And the key, the key on this, the second Sunday of Lent, as we hear the story of the transfiguration, the key is found in the gift of listening. That's where you and I can find the ability then to not get pulled in the direction of the past or the direction of the future, but where you and I can then be in the here and now. And it requires that we listen. I just, about a week or so ago, because of course I love nature, I find myself reading different things about nature, and a week ago I came across a story about a South Asian river dolphin. Are you familiar with them? I wasn't. The South Asian, Asian river dolphin is unique in that, why it is unlike most creatures that live in the sea or in the water. Because most creatures that live underwater have a crystalline lens that enables them then to see underwater. But the South Asian river dolphin doesn't have that crystalline lens. They are not able to see underwater. So how do they know where they are? How do they know where here is? sound. They're constantly clicking, that clicking sound, day and night. And the click keeps saying, here, here is where I am. Here, 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 here. And they do it all the while, knowing where here is, through the gift of sound of listening. You see, it's the reason why Jesus tells Peter, James, and John, keep your mouth shut in terms of what you just saw. Because, well, because Peter, James, and John, what would they tell the other disciples and everybody else about? They would tell them about the dazzling white garment because that's what they would fixate on because that's what you and I fixate on when we hear the story of the transfiguration it's about that white garment wow it was amazing it was why it was so white that not even a, a, a fuller could bleach it that white because notice jesus doesn't want them fixating on the dazzling garment because in a little while those same garments of his will be stripped from his body filled with blood and sweat. What Jesus wants them to understand is the message that they received, not from Jesus, but from, but from God, from the big guy. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. So it means, my friends, that we have to close our eyes because if we spend too much time looking we will miss the here. We will miss the moment where presence and offering meet. Because how else can we know how to offer our lives to another person if we don't first take the opportunity to be present to them and to listen to them? Because it's when we sit down with one another that ultimately, face to face, we can, why, we can listen to one another and we can listen to the sounds that we're making and the stories that we're telling. And in the course of that listening, then we begin to discover that in my being present to you and you being present to me, why then we can have the offering. We can offer ourselves. We can offer a helping hand. We can offer some advice. We can offer whatever it is that each of us needs at that moment, right here and right now. And when we are attentive to that, transfiguration happens. 
we are changed by the conversation. We are changed by the person in front of us. We are changed because we choose to be in the presence of one another and of our God. So on this second Sunday of Lent, let us be aware that we should be focused in on here. Here I am. Here I am with you. Here we are together. Here we go. Here is where we are. Here is where we need to be. Here is both presence and offering. And when the two meet, why, then we discover that God is here. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us turn to the Lord our God, asking that he be attentive and that he hear our prayers. For the whole church, that we open our hearts to God's unconditional love and forgiveness during this Lenten season, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For governments to uphold and defend religious freedom and human rights for all, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For a new and deeper understanding of how our faith compels us to act on behalf of the poor and marginalized, persecuted, and the suffering, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those preparing to celebrate the sacraments of baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer for the ability to recognize the presence of God in the here and now, in order that we might radiate his presence in our daily encounters with others. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have gone before us, that their example of faith and love will be a constant reminder for us to share our gifts eagerly each day. Remembering Spencer Larson, Earl and Catherine Smith, and Jim Strouth, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the healing of the sick, shelter for the homeless, food for the hungry, safety for the travelers, military and health care workers, and answers to the prayers written in our Book of Intentions, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O oh Lord our God, it is good that we are here. We thank you for your presence and for the offering of your Son. And so as we offer to you the gifts of bread and wine and the gift of ourselves,
We pray that you might transform them and us into the living image and presence of your Son. Hear our petitions, answer them according to your will. For we ask them through Christ our Lord. Sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice, O Lord, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death, on the holy mountain he manifested to them his glory, to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are constantly at work so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross, but before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the body, that once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you 
the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate God, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and the one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, with all the bishops, the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, and with our deceased sisters and brothers, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then, freed at last from the wound of corruption, and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us now pray for the coming of God's kingdom as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Again, I would invite you to, when you come for communion, those in the side sections, if you would come down the aisle along the stained glass windows to receive communion and to return back uh, the other way, those in the center sections will come down the side aisle as you have been accustomed to doing. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those now called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Loving and forgiving are you. All my being, bless the Lord. Bless the holy name of God. All my being, bless the Lord. Remembering the goodness of God. Loving and Forgiving are you, O Lord, slow to anger, rich in kindness, loving and forgiving 
are you? God forgives us all our sins, healing those who live in pain, saving us from final death. God fills us with goodness and love. Loving and forgiving are you, O oh Lord, slow to anger, rich in kindness, loving and forgiving are you. Good and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger, rich in love. God remembers not our sins, forgiving and loving is God. Loving and forgiving are you, O Lord, slow to anger, rich in kindness, loving and forgiving are you. As heaven soars above the earth, so great the love of God for us. As far as east is from the west, the Lord takes our sins from us. Loving and forgiving are you, O So do anger, rich in kindness, loving and would ask that you please remember in your prayers the repose of the soul of Jim Strout. The visitation for Jim will be tomorrow afternoon from 1 to 3 p.m. at Harvey Anderson Funeral Home. There will also be the funeral mass here at the Church of St. Mary on Monday morning at 11 o'clock. There will also be a 9 o'clock daily mass here at the Church of St. Mary as well. So when you see that in the bulletin, that is not a mistake. There will be a daily mass at 9 and the funeral mass at 11 a.m. But I would ask that you please remember Jim as well as his wife Karen and son Ryan during this time of sorrow and loss. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord.
and may he rest in peace. Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us while still on earth to be partakers even now of the things of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Beyond the days of hope and mystery, we see a light of faith renewed, and in our longing, we thirst for kindness to walk with you day by day. Forty days and nights, you guide the steps of our journey. In the whisper of your voice, beyond the days of hope and mystery, we see the light of faith renewed.